Good afternoon and welcome to your four o'clock news with me, Daniel Jardine. And me, Amy Johnson. Two elderly people were hit by a bus outside the Victoria Centre on Mansfield Road this morning. We have Abel Asha Pavar in the studio to tell us more about the incident. Can you tell us the details of the incident, please? Well, according to eyewitnesses, the as of yet unnamed man and woman were in a collision with a 39 Blue Line bus running from Carlton Valley to the city. The accident occurred outside Victoria Center near Boots around 11.30 a.m. You see, the area has uh, had its issues uh, with three converging lanes, a pedestrian crossing, numerous bus stops. Uh, so there has been traffic trouble be there before. Uh, the ambulance was there within minutes uh, with an on-site off-duty paramedic tending to the couple as uh, the police cordoned off the area. Has there been any serious harm to the couple? Well, the lady was being tended to on the site, but uh, apparently it was due to severe stomach pains rather than uh, serious injuries. Unfortunately, the man did suffer a severe head injury. Um, according to eyewitnesses, it, he was caught under the bus. They both have been rushed off to Queen's Medical Center. Uh, we also spoke to an eyewitness who was working at the newspaper stall nearby who saw the incident and rushed over to help. So I went over to see if it was all right. The old bloke had a head injury, serious head injury. The woman was just regaining consciousness. She had really bad stomach pains. There was an off-duty paramedic there. She was telling me what to say to the ambulance people on the phone. And as soon as the ambulance took about five minutes to get in, and then as soon as it was there, I come back over to work to keep out the way. So Abby, tell me what delays will there be to public transport? Uh, well, both Lower Parliament and Milton Street were closed off during the incident, but uh, I'm happy to say that they both have re reopened completely with functioning traffic on both streets. Brilliant, thank you. So I went over to see if it was all right. The old bloke had a head injury, serious head injury. The woman was just regaining consciousness. She had really bad stomach pains. There was an off-duty paramedic there. She was telling me what to say to the ambulance people on the phone. And as soon as the ambulance took about five minutes to get in, and then as soon as it was there, I come back over to work to keep out the way. Apologise for the technical uh, hitch with the with the video there. But on a further note, the bus company has agreed to cooperate fully with the investigation. Nottingham's trams have been causing passengers trouble recently after a series of daily breakdowns. This morning, commuters experienced delays in two different locations due to a collision and a tram failure. The service, which is run by National Express Transit, has cost over £270 million to construct and connect people to the city centre from all corners of Nottingham. Students across the region have been getting a lesson in online safety today as part of a national campaign. Safer Internet Day is a yearly event that plans to give students and parents tips on how to be safe online. This comes after a report showed that one in four teenagers had been victims of cyberbullying. Head teachers are using the campaign to promote the safe and responsible use of technology amongst their students. But it's not just schools getting involved, the local charities and businesses are also supporting the event. The Safer Internet Day official website gives us further support, advice and guidance. This month we are celebrating the history of lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender rights. CBJ's Katie Michaels has more. Rainbow colours are being displayed around the city in support of the LGBT community. Nottinghamshire's Rainbow Heritage Charity is holding an awards night at Nottingham Council House. Awards will be presented to organisations which have benefited the LGBT society. The event, which takes place on February the 23rd, hopes to raise awareness for minority groups and celebrate the achievements they have made as a community. These days, we've got people from all walks of life who are there as positive role models. The more people come out, the easier it is for more people to come out. So, as I say, it's a virtuous circle. So yes, things are changing, but there is still homophobia, there is still biphobia, there is still transphobia. It's still out there. So the progress is good, but there's a long way to go. In today's society, there is so much information available online. Support pages for lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender people, as well as chat rooms and event listings. Things have come a long way since the early 90s, with gay marriage becoming legal and acceptance throughout society. 
this is a hugely important turnaround for those in the gay community. Um, I go to a load of LGBT events through the year, such as Pride events. When they come up, I go to support the LGBT community. There's a lot of people, especially through going to the LGBT events, you meet a lot of people who go through similar stories as you. Through that, you develop bonds and friendships, which give you the support that you need. Nottingham's a good city to be gay in. There's a lot of events for the LGBT community. Both the universities have good LGBT societies which offer support and the Pride and the LGBT events coming up at the end of this month highlight the community and give everyone a sense of they're not alone. It's not just this month that Nottingham shows its support. In the city there are 10 gay clubs that run events on a weekly basis, 16 individual support groups with contact lines, advice websites are getting at least 100 hits a day and thousands of people marched at Nottingham's Gay Pride. LGBT Month, claiming our past, celebrating our present, creating our future. Katie Michaels reporting for CBJ News. The first stage of Nottingham's flood defences have been announced to make flooded homes and roads a thing of the past. 18 hotspots have been outlined for improvements in homes in Australia and Top Valley have been prioritised. A figure of around £30,000 is due to be spent on all of these areas. Woolerton Hall has been placed in the top three historic houses to go and visit in the country. Landlove magazine readers have been voting since last year to crown the best countryside home and the local attraction, owned and run by the City Council, came second in the poll. The hall, that sees visitor numbers in excess of 200,000 a year, fills the award as an exceptional honour. A great honour. I mean, we know it's a fantastic building and a fantastic site, but the recognition is brilliant. I mean, we, we couldn't ask for much more apart from to be top, of course. Um, but, say, the building itself is a stunning <coughs> building, inside and out. Uh, and there's also the gardens. There's a camellia house. There's various other things. Well, some of them are world okay. firsts anyway, the first type of camellia house that we have. Um, and various other things, the, the um, prospect room, nothing like it left in the Chinese lattice flooring that we have up there. So, yeah, we've got lots of firsts, um, but we continue to hopefully strive for, for better. Today marks Shrove Tuesday, or as it is more commonly known, Pancake Day. There are numerous events going on around the city, although the traditional 14th anniversary pancake race has been cancelled due to high winds. Venues across Nottingham are flipping up some of the best pancakes in town to celebrate Pancake Day. Hockley Arts Club is hosting a pancake party today, serving traditional favourites with the choice of build your own pancake kits. The Nottingham Pancake Appreciation Society has organised the event, which will run from midday until 10pm. Hundreds of pancake fans are expected, according to the event's official Facebook page. How did this come about, Rory? Uh, just came, came about as a bit of a laugh, really, uh, to start with. Uh, myself and a couple of friends were at home uh, discussing various, uh, uh, various loves we have. Pancakes got mentioned, so uh, we sort of set, set a group up on, um, set, set a, a page up, and uh, um, almost just as, just as a bit of a laugh, really, and um, set, set the event up. And, and it appears that there's plenty of pancake lovers in, in Nottingham, so it, it sort of went went really big, really fast, and uh, here we are. Yeah, I was going to say, are there 1.6k likes or people uh, supposedly coming yeah, to the event? something like that, yeah, there's about, uh, about 6, 1.6 thousand people interested in the event. Well, Amy, you could say Pancake Day's really crept up on us. Well, now on to today's sport. Derby County have sacked their head coach, Paul Clement, after a series of poor performances. Derby find themselves in fifth place in the championship, but with no wins in the last seven games, the board felt the change in personnel was much needed. Coach Darren Wassall has been placed in charge of the side until the end of the season, as Derby looked for a replacement as soon as possible to put their push for promotion back on track. Nottinghamshire's Alex Hales was out for 65 earlier, as England post 318 for 8 in the third one-day international against South Africa. And now for the weather with Sophie Wolfe. Expect showers this evening, which may fall as sleet or snow on higher ground. It will also become very breezy across the Midlands, with highs of just 4 degrees tomorrow morning. You could see more sunshine, with highs expected to reach around 7 degrees tomorrow. Well, that's all from your afternoon news team. You can keep up to date with us on our website or on Twitter at CBJ News Reports. I've been Daniel Jardine. And I've been Amy Johnson.
Good night.